The purpose of this video is to provide students with an introduction to some fundamental robotics concepts that will be useful during the design of the robot. Information from this video will be useful for students during their individual generation of their designs, as well as during the final catting of a group's final robot. Um, so groups will accomplish the given task using assorted motors provided by the lab. These motors are going to provide the movement or power for any moving part of your robot from drive wheels to release gate mechanisms, grippers, basically anything that moves. Um, make sure to choose each motor relative to its given function on your robot as each one has different rated speeds and torques. So motors are going to be connected to the frame of your robot, which is generally going to be made out of 80-20 aluminum extrusion and then powered by one of these control boxes like the one shown here. Each control box has an, uh, an associated controller, kind of like a video game controller. And when you push buttons or move the joysticks on it, it's going to send a signal to the control box and then provide a voltage to the motor. Um, so an example, if I move this joystick right here, we see the motor starts to spin. Now each button and joystick is going to correspond to a different port on the control box. For most of the design projects, you're going to be limited to five motors. Two of those motors are going to be controlled uh, with proportional control. Basically, that means that the output speed of the motor is going to be relative to how far you're going to push one of these joysticks in either direction. Um, so for example, if I push this joystick up just a little bit, you see the motor is not spinning super fast. But if I push it all the way up, it increases its speed. Um, the rest, the other three ports through the control box are going to be controlled with what's called relay control where it's basically a button that is on or off. I can either turn the motor on or not have it on, uh, but you can't vary the speed. Most motors will be secured to the frame by means of a motor mount. A motor mount is essentially a piece of aluminum with holes drilled in a specific pattern that will match up with the bolt pattern of a given motor. For example, this motor mount can be placed on top of this motor, and as you see, the holes will match up with the threads on the casing of the motor. We can then take bolts or screws and screw in the mount to the motor, securing them together. Obviously, in the future, when you use this, you want to make sure that these bolts are tightened all the way down. But for now, this is just for demonstration purposes. On the other side of the motor mount, there are two clearance holes drilled, which allow fasteners to pass through them and clamp the mount itself to 80-20 therefore securing the motor to the frame. The only motors that do not need motor mounts to connect to the frame are the linear actuators, which use clevis mounts, and the glow motor, which connects directly to 8020. Transference of the movement from the motor to the mechanism it's powering is usually achieved by means of a hub. A hub will be secured to the motor shaft and subsequently to the material or mechanism that it is powering, such as a wheel. Methods by which hubs are secured to motor shafts will be covered later in the course. In this example, this hub has a bolt pattern that will match with the bolt pattern on one of the wheels given in lab. We'll secure this to the motor shaft and then screw on the wheel to it. And subsequently, when we activate the motor, the wheel will spin. Here we see the entire assembly put together and in action. As you can see, the motor is secured to the frame via a motor mount and transfers power to the wheel via a hub. Keep in mind that similar components will be needed to power all moving parts of your robot, not just the drive wheels. It's important to specifically show the components needed for motor attachment and power transmission in your first design reports.